So do you guys want to know the best settings in Adobe Premiere so you can have the best quality in all of your YouTube, online, social media, all video things up here? Well, I'm going to show you in Adobe Premiere. So what we're going to do first, if you don't know how to use Premiere Pro yet with the new UI, is you click on new project and you want to find whatever project you want to name it. Project name now is in the top left corner. I'm going to name this best export settings underscore YouTube underscore BBC CO project location wherever you keep your project files like before and you just hit create. There's a lot of these different import settings that you can use, but for the sake of this tutorial, just click create. All right, don't even worry about it. So let's say you already have an existing sequence. And for the sake of this video, I'm, I'm just going to drag and drop a random video YouTube video that I just made already, plop that into my timeline, and this is my make-believe sequence that I just created, let's say hours of editing already, and what I need to do now is before, what you need to do is, you know, file, and then click export, and hit media, which you can, but now with the new uh, user interface, all you need to do now is right here next to the edit, there is export. So you hit on export, give it a minute to load, and you can see First, what you want to do is you want to see where the range is. Your work area, your in and out, or custom. So what that's referring to is where this clip was. So I'm going to have my in and out points and select that. So I'm going to go over to export. And now you will see this is what it is going to be rendering. First, what you want to do is you want to go into your file name, name it whatever you want, best export settings, ever, right? You don't even need to have the .mp4, right? You actually get rid of that, but it will automatically generate that. Next is you want to figure out where is this video going to be? Where's the location? And now there are all these match source presets. So by default, you want to leave it on match source adaptive high bitrate, and your format is H.264. And that is for most online video content, your YouTube, even client content. And all this is really familiar to the old school media encoder. All you need to do is drop down your video tab here and you will start to see these familiar options. So first is the easiest way. You click match source and that will automatically match the source. So example, if your clip was already in 4K, it's going to match the dimensions. So keep that all is, it's going to be progressive. This is a 4K video, square pixels one. And then you want to click this little more tab. Here is where you can get the best video settings as before. If you want the highest render and you're the biggest file and highest quality and nothing is lost, you render at maximum depth as well as maximum render quality, right? But it'll, as you can see here, increases the quality time, but better scaling quality. Same with maximum depth, supported by the format settings regarding the depth of the footage source footage. Next, scroll down here. So if you want to have faster encoding, what you want to do is make sure that is on hardware, which uses your computer's dedicated graphics card in comparison to just software encoding. It's very similar to CUDA, OpenCL, Meta, compared to just Mercury Playback Engine. Scroll down a little bit more. You can pretty much ignore all these. And here is your bitrate settings. So one pass is completely fine, but if you want to have a higher quality video, two pass, and you want to hit your target bitrate to 19, 225. And that is a good number for a standard YouTube video. You don't have to crank this all the way up to like 100 something. The file is going to be huge, as you can see here, right? For my YouTube videos, you can just have it as pretty much default it does not need to be that high of a target bit rate. Anywhere from 10 to 30 is more than enough. If you have a client video, let's say do two pass, and then you go 19 to 25. All these other layers and uh, drop down menus don't really need to worry about them. It is pretty much, this is just the metadata. And those are the exact coding that you need to worry about. So. If you're super lazy, all you need to do is match source, go here, adaptive high bitrate, and Adobe will automatically do all those settings for you. 
puts that at 61. You know, you can really toy around and see the difference between a 19 to 20 to a 30 to 60 to 100 target bit rate. And what it's saying is that you're telling Adobe, it's like, don't go past this number. This needs to be a baseline of terms of megabits per second in terms of the bit rate, right? That's allowed by the encoder. Once you have your settings set out within Adobe Premiere, two things you can do. So what you can do is all you need to do is you can click export and that will pop up the render box I'm gonna show you right now. And it will render just like usual within Adobe Premiere, right? Six minutes. But let's say you wanna multitask. Let's say you have a computer that lets you, you know, you wanna work on After Effects. Send this to Media Encoder. So you hit that and Adobe Premiere is gonna tell Media Encoder to, hey, open up, we have a request file for you and Media Encoder will open. Now that we have Media Encoder here, this is very familiar. Little things are different. You know, you have come, some of your presets that you've made or may not have made. I'll talk about that a little later. And you click on this match source adaptive high bit rate and it will open a dynamic link. And hey, this is the old school export settings that we're all used to and very familiar with, right? Here it is, exact same thing, one pass, two pass. Here are all your presets. And that is how you do this, right? And let's say you already set out your numbers and you did all these export settings and you checked, you know, it's H.264, it's 4K file, you're filming at 30 frames, progressive, you know, VBR one pass, here's your target bit rate. And you're like, okay, I don't wanna keep doing these settings over and over. And now what I do is click these three dots, save preset, I can, I can name this YouTube render. Click okay. So now every time you have a video you wanna render and you don't wanna do the same thing over and over again with all these numbers, just hit preset, go down. Hey, I have a YouTube preset render that I know the exact settings of and I click export or send to media encoder. And that guys is how you get the best video settings for Adobe Premiere. Like I said, these numbers are pretty much exactly the same with the old school like, exporter with the media encoder, but you just have this newer user interface. And the cool thing now is you can upload and you connect all your social media platforms, whether it's YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, Facebook, XYZ, you just need to log in with your account and you can have Premiere upload the finished render file straight onto YouTube. All you gotta do is just link your accounts. If you wanna get serious about video editing, make sure you get my resources in the description below. Whether you want one month free on Skillshare, you can have access of all my video editing tutorials from learning the Adobe Premiere Pro, the basics, or if you wanna take video editing to the next level and start that as a freelancing career, check that out as well. And lastly, if you get the best quality settings, Besides in Premiere Pro, you want to make sure you have the best quality settings within your camera first. That is the most important thing. And I have a guide for you, just for you that's watching it. Get that. Help me help you. And thanks for watching. My name is Peter, Broke Furniture Collective. We also learn nothing, but you can always create something. Cheers, guys.